Bed Talk number 35. That is a lot of bed talks. I can't believe you're still watching them. I can't believe I'm still doing them. But here we are. Here we are. And today is special, if you cannot tell already. Today is special because it's Friday. And I decided it was going to be fancy Friday because I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time in my jammy pants and I thought, you know, I want to be fancy and I'm still waiting on some t-shirts to come in and I'm excited to show you those. So don't, I mean, don't worry, I'm going to give some love to my t-shirt peeps, but it's Friday and I wanted to be fancy and just celebrate the fact that we made it through another week. And so here I am. This is one of my New Year's Eve dresses. Um, I love to get dressed up and go to New Year's Eve parties and dance. And this dress is fabulous because it's like I'm a human curtain tassel. And if you have never worn a dress that is tassel-y, you need to like if you've never tried to be a human curtain tassel like you you've got to try this and I don't care I'm talking to both men and women here because this is fun like don't even like it's fun because you get to like run around I would stand up and show you but I struggle with the whole camera standing showing thing and I'm gonna do something like that's beyond awkward <laughs> if this isn't already beyond awkward I'm gonna do something beyond awkward if we try that. So, but anyway, can you see it? And then I have like tassel earrings and my nails. I did my nails, but they don't really match. It's fine. Um, anyway, it's Friday and we're in bed talk number 35. And I am going through this week and dispelling some myths around public speaking because dang it, y'all have something to say and I want you to say it. And I am exhausted from all of the advice that's given that really doesn't help people. It's advice that ends up getting people tied up in their head and nervous and scared and worried and insecure and oh, I don't love it. So I decided I was going to tackle that this week because that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a speaking coach and I'm a speaker and that, like, let's do that. So today I am tackling the myth or the belief that no one wants to listen to you. Oh boy, have you ever said that? Have you ever thought that? Are you thinking it right now? You're like, seriously, Alex, no one wants to listen to me. Well, no one, that's a pretty big category, first of all. So let me tell you, I like that's a myth. It is not true. Now, I wanna be a realist here because I am practical. So um, does everyone want to listen to you? No, they don't. That's not going to happen. That's not reality. And that's 100% okay. Because the minute that you can wrap your mind around that piece, then you've got some gold. Because you can figure out who does want to listen to you. And I know that there are plenty of people out there that are willing to listen to your story, to listen to your talk, to listen to your presentation, to listen to your meeting, to listen to your idea, to listen to your questions. There are plenty of people willing to do that. You have to find them. Max, he said he has waited a long time for a Cheeto. He said he's had to do a picture with mom. He's like, I had to do a photo op with mom. And now I'm having to sit through this very long talk and I don't want to. Well, you're just going to have to wait. Not everyone, wants, not everyone wants to listen to you either, Max. They don't. Okay, actually, I think, I don't know. There's probably some dog lovers or some dog haters out there in the world. But anyway, those aren't my people. It Don't buy the lie that no one wants to listen to you. So maybe you've had the experience where you have gotten up to do a presentation and you've gotten the feedback form, the feedback form of doom, where <laughs> there are like 17,000 comments. That's a lot. You must have spoken to a big audience, but there's 17,000 comments that are fabulous. And then there's that one that was like, I didn't really get it. She stands funny. She moves too much. She's very loud. She's just too much. Or um, one of my very good friends, Jason Barnaby, once got a comment that he was injured. He was speaking injured. He's on. He's in one of those little weird knee boot things and has a cart. And so the comment was the cart was distracting. Look at listen. You're not going to please everybody, and not everyone is going to want to listen to you. 
but there is someone that wants to listen to you. And it's your job to go out and start talking and finding them. They can't listen to you if you're not speaking. If you let that that belief hold you back, you'll never find the people that are willing to listen. So it's, it's a myth. It's something that we say to ourselves that just, it stops us before we ever get started. You have to get started. You have to start saying the things. And then the people who want to listen to you will start listening. And then it gets really cool because then they start commenting and then they start talking and then you get more ideas and it circles and it bounces and it's a wonderful experience, but you have to get rid of the idea that no one wants to listen and just start talking. Okay. Uh, This poor boy, did you see that? He's like, give me the Cheeto. So happy fancy Friday. I hope that your Friday is filled with Cheetos and with great things and puppies and love. And oh my gosh, he's like, please, mom. You already made me do portion control and I don't like it. I want to listen to you. I hope you've got something fabulous to say and I hope that you share it with me. I will see you tomorrow. And by the way, if, if nothing else, get a little fancy today. You deserve it. See ya.